Hello my lovelies. I'm afraid there's no new Wheel of the Year Pagan Calendar photo shoot this week uh, because we haven't had one. I'm afraid Mark and I, Mark the photographer, we've been far too busy setting up a new art exhibition in nearby High Wycombe which actually goes live this coming Saturday. But we haven't been resting on our laurels by any means. Mark's been scouting out locations and uh, arranging for people to come along as models because we've got a couple of group photographs coming up and I've been making props. And I thought as an interim video to tide you over until we do the next photo shoot, I'd show you the making of one of those. So I'm gonna show you how I made a spirit rattle. Now with this pagan calendar, we wanted to touch on many different aspects of paganism and different belief systems. And we've touched on witchcraft and uh, Wicca. We've touched slightly on Druidry, although there's more to come, but we hadn't really done anything on shamanism and the role of the shaman in uh, pre-Christian and, and societies that don't uh, follow the main religions. So that's what this make is all about. Shamans basically come from the Americas. They are, kind of healers but spiritual healers what they do is they use altered states of consciousness to actually heal people and, and the way they look at it is that they're connecting people with the spirits of their ancestors and the way they do this is sometimes through the use of drugs like ayahuasca or marijuana sometimes they do it solely with the use of rhythmic patterns on drums and rattles and things like that and the shaman can be found everywhere right from the very frozen north of the americas up in alaska and canada you know with the inuit etc right down through north america with the plains dwellers like the apache and the cheyenne and uh, the sioux and all those sorts of tribes and then down into central america and into south america where you had the aztecs the toltecs and some great civilizations but common throughout the entire continent is the shaman who is the the holy person, the person who has the skills and the ability to heal people. Now, as I said, they will quite often use rhythmic um, tools such as drums and rattles and things like that to create an almost hypnotic state with chanting and dancing and that sort of thing. And it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful when you see it done. Um, I've concentrated on this particular little build on making a thing called a spirit rattle. And a spirit rattle is something that is shaken around a room to drive away bad spirits and to open the door to good spirits coming in. I thought it'd be a nice prop to have for one of our photo shoots and a nice little nod to shamanistic culture. The problem is they cost a fortune. I mean, I couldn't find one online for less than about 120, 130 quid. So I decided to make one. And I've had this antler for about 20 years. Um, I can't remember where I found it now. I thought I'll do something like that one day and never did. Well, today I started doing something with it. I drilled a couple of holes uh, in the tops of the prongs. There's one there and there's one there. I'm going to string a wire through there and put some rattly bits on there. And I'm going to create a spirit rattle. I started by fixing one end of a fine piece of wire. So fine you can barely see it there. Look, it's like the thickness of a human hair. Um, tying it at one end with a seashell, which will also add to the noise. What I'm going to do now is onto this wire, I'm going to thread seashells, bells and all sorts. So I've added some seashells, some beads, some bells. And we've got a nice jangle. Now I've wrapped a few ribbons around the outside to make it look pretty and uh, it's making a pretty good sound. I decided that the um, rattle needed a handle. Now it just so happens I've got this piece of hazel that I've been drying for a year to turn into a thumbstick and uh, it was a little bit too long so I've sawn a bit off the end and um, and I've made this which fits really nicely into the hand really nicely into the hand like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bore a hole in the end here and bore a hole in the end of the antler and then put a peg in the middle to give it some strength glue them together give the wood a bit of a sanding a bit of treatment and that'll be lovely so now I've drilled a hole in the end of the wood and I've drilled a hole in the end of the antler and I have this piece of rebar rod which I'm going to use to give it strength 
uh, and it'll be set in place with a bit of two-part epoxy adhesive. Now all we've got to do is treat the wood and add a bit more decoration and we're done. I could work with wood all day just for the smell of this stuff. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Turpentine and beeswax and linseed oil. It smells amazing. I'm now on the search for feathers. Oh, lords and ladies there. I'm now on the search for feathers because it's nice to have a couple of feathers to attach to one of these things because it's all sort of natural materials. I mean, apart from the bells and the ribbon, it's, you know, it's antlers, it's wood, it's seashells. And uh, it'd be nice to find a couple of decent feathers to add to it. And it should be a good time to find feathers because the birds have all been preening out their old feathers in preparation for the autumn and winter. Well, I found a couple pigeon feathers by the looks of it. It'd be nice to find something more exotic though, you know, like uh, something from a red kite. I'm deliberately walking through all the little wooded areas surrounded by trees where I know the red kites nest in the hope we might find something. And uh, on top of which it keeps us a little bit in the shade so poor old Pug doesn't overheat. At last, a half decent feather for this year. Probably a red kite, possibly a buzzard, but there's not many buzzards around here because we've got so many red kites. So I'm inclined to go red kite, but that's a nice one. So I've added the feathers, added some more beads, and I think we're done. Go away, nasty spirits. So there you have it, a spirit rattle, or at least a facsimile of one. I mean, I'm very wary of issues that there are with cultural appropriation, but I want to make it quite clear right from the outset, this is not intended to be used for any kind of religious purpose. It is solely as a prop for a photo shoot. And once the shoot is over, I'll probably put it away, or I may even recycle the bits to be used in other projects in the future. Um, but it's a nice prop to have, and you'll see it in a future photo shoot. In the meantime, um, keep watching. There'll be another shoot again soon, and we've got some quite exciting ones coming up, including one at the infamous Hellfire Club Caves. And trust me, if you think you know all about the Hellfire Club because you've seen a few episodes of Stranger Things, you've got a treat in store, because there was a real Hellfire Club back in the 1700s, and they were based in a set of caves and tunnels that were carved into a chalk hillside. And we are going to be doing our next photo shoot in there, which is very exciting. We got permission from the, the Lord and Lady who own the caves uh, to actually do a photo shoot in there. So, if you want to see that and more of the same, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, toodle pip. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing or Click on some of these links to look at some of the other videos on the channel. Or press the like button. Or leave a comment. It would be lovely to hear from you. Any combination of those four things would be wonderful. Thank you very much.